Welcome to another version of Field Phone Ops. Today we're going to talk about the British Telephone Set D Mark V, which was a very common telephone instrument used by British Commonwealth forces during World War II. So sit back and enjoy. Welcome to another version of TAC Phone Ops. Today we're going to talk about the Telephone Set D Mark V, which is a British telephone set used during World War II. Um, talk about this and fully understand how this works. We're going to go back a little bit to World War One, where the British uh, developed what's called the Fuller Phone. It was developed by Captain Fuller. And the problem that they were having was there was a lot of eavesdropping going on with field phone calls from the Germans. And at the time, the field phones they used were single wire field phones, where you had a wire that came out of the phone and went to a stake in the ground, and then you had a single wire that ran to the other phone. Well, what happened was all these ground currents were interceptable through what was called the induction and the Germans were knowing what the British plans were and it actually was really horrible several times because the Germans knew about some of the major offenses that the British were doing and they knew the timing exactly what was going to happen so the British would launch the attack uh, the Germans would all be down in their bunkers ride the artillery barrage out as soon as the artillery was done they'd get their machine guns up and they'd just mow the British down by the thousands and this was becoming a problem. The British first thought, well, we have spies, and then had some civilian technicians come over and say, no, it's because of these induction currents. Well, the first thing the British realized, well, you could get rid of the induction currents if you use two-wire twisted pair phone cable or wire. Well, the first thing they decided on now is we've got thousands of miles of wire out. We can't replace all that. Is there anything we can do with existing in-place infrastructure we have? That's where Captain Fuller came in. Captain Fuller came back with two prototype systems and basically what they were was they were uh, teletype or telegraph systems and uh, they worked really well uh, they worked on poor lines, they worked on noisy lines and they're also such a low level that the Germans could detect what was going on and actually uh, during World War II they did some testing with fuller phones and uh, they determined, uh, not really a phone, with fuller sets they determined they could actually go 700 miles on an underwater submarine cable using uh, fuller sets. Um, the other thing about the fuller sets was you could run a fuller set on the same set of wires you were running a telephone call on at the same time and neither one would interfere with each other. So this was a big deal. So uh, between the, uh, the period after the war, the British, the British really jumped on this, developed it, got, them, got fuller sets made smaller, uh, more sensitive, more reliable, and away they went. Well then, uh, about the time World War II was getting ready to kick off, the British came up with uh, the Telephone Set D Mark V, which I have right here. And this is interesting because what this did was it sort of melded the capabilities of a field telephone with a fuller set. So we'll go ahead and open this up here. It's just basically an aluminum case with carrying straps on it. We'll open it up. And you can see, and this is it right here, pretty simple system. Basically has a handset right here. Pull it out, off cable, along with a handset cradle, pull it out, handset plug, and it just plugs right in here. You can feel the, uh, handset rode like this. Um, you had, these are your binding posts right here, could work on either twisted pair field wire or a single wire system with this being on the ground. This was a magneto bell. What this allowed you to do was make receive incoming phone calls from a magneto phone, the hand crank. Um, this this was the battery pack right here. It actually operated on two 1.5 volt, I mean the batteries are largest. Battery pack is the whole depth of this right here. I ended up installing a quick uh, fix using a two detail battery holders. This was the Morse key. We'll talk about that a little bit later. This was the probably the heart of the system. This is the buzzer unit that makes the buzzing sound when the teletype signals are set. And these knobs on here allow you to tune the signal so it sounds good. So it's one of those things that as the shift or time worn, you're constantly having to mess with these and adjust them to get a good, clear buzzer tone sound when you had teletype signals going on. Handset, like I said, right here. It's got a push to talk on it. Fits right in there like that. Um, talked about the buzzer. What's not neat interesting about the buzzer is the whole unit can be removed. Get the phone out of the way. 
like this, and this is pretty much what it looked like. Contacts on the bottom, both the piece on top, and it just slid right inside here like this. On the inside of the cover, you had schematics of how the phone operated, and you had the actual operating instructions to uh, adjust the buzzer, test it, and all that good stuff. It also came with a little arm right here that folded out like this. I'll get this set up here. So this is the actual ploy. If you took to the field, this is how you would have it set up. This little piece inside here like this. The little arm keeps the lid from flopping around. Okay, there we go. And that's how you'd have it deployed if you're using it in the field. Um, uh, this one is actually a 1940 model. As they came out, they were used by all the British Commonwealth forces, which is the British, Canadians, Australians, and New Zealanders. Um, this phone, like I said, could perform voice or most co Morse code operations. And this is this is it right here. Um, it could receive magneto phone calls, but it couldn't make them, which was interesting. So you could call from one uh, Mark V telephone to another Mark V telephone or to a British switchboard by using the buzzer on I'll demonstrate that here in a second. Incoming calls you could take from, let's say, uh, British literature, uh, actually mentioned using EE8 crank phones like the U.S. used to make calls to it. Um, the actual range on this with the correct kind of, kind of cape, excuse me, correct cable is 8 to, eight to about 16 miles on the voice side and then Morse code 15 to 25 miles depending on the cable use. Once again, like I said, this is not a fuller phone. It was developed sort of from the fuller phone. The fuller phone was a lot more compact, didn't have a telephone handset, it was a lot more sensitive, had a lot better range. So we'll go ahead and uh, explain the operations a little bit more here. We'll uh, shut down and I'll actually hook an EE8 up to it and we'll make some phone calls. Okay, I have an EEA hooked up. Uh, British literature mentioned using EEAs connected to these telephones, the binding posts here. The first thing we'll do is I'll make a phone call from the EEA to the Mark V. Okay, I'll Not really loud, but definitely usable if you had to do it. And then as far as the audio quality is, let me do a quick check here. Test one, two. Test one, two. Audio is a little weak on the receive end on the earpiece on this, but I'm wondering if I maybe have a bad earpiece or I need to clean some contacts up. Now, the other problem that you ran into is how do you call the EEA? There's no hand crank on this. So what you would do is you would... Now, inside the handset here... You can hear a little bit, it's not too bad, it's, it's okay, not really loud, but on the receiving handset, it's really loud, so you could use the Morse code key to signal the phone on the other end if somebody's calling. Now you would have to have somebody listening to an EEA or they wouldn't hear it. Uh, the British actually had portable field switchboards that would receive this signal and light a little light on that line similar to our uh, SB22s of the old BD series during World War II. Let's talk about the teletype key here a little bit. I apologize to any purists. When I bought this phone, it was missing the actual teletype key that came with it. So what I ended up doing is I found this is a actual Russian-made one from, uh, I'd probably say the 60s or the 70s, that it was small and it would fit in here, not the best. So I do have something I can use. So you can send teletype signals back and forth, but uh, I am on the hunt for the correct one. So this is pretty much it. Like I said, the British used these. British Commonwealth forces used these. Uh, World War II into Korea, they used them. Um, it's not a polar phone. I want to stress that. It was sort of based on the premise of this polar phone, having the, melt, the, the Morse code key, but a polar phone did not have the telephone key to it. So this basically worked both ways. Very highly used by the British Artillery Corps for calling for their artillery shooting, also for anti-aircraft defense in Britain itself. All the uh, they had thousands of these deployed to uh, 
all their observation posts and spider airfields and everything to keep contact with everybody. And like I said, this one I got was made in Canada. It was actually made in 1940, so this unit is 80 years old. In incredible sh shape. I apologize for not having the correct teletype key. Maybe sometime in the future, but uh, maybe I'll learn more code someday. Anyway, this is uh, the British telephone set D Mark V. Thanks for watching.